listening to Second Wind with Joyce Buford, where women who are ready to expand their life adventure discover the tools to stop playing small and tap into the courage required to enjoy their Second Wind. Welcome. Good afternoon. This is Joyce Buford, and you're listening to Second Wind. And I am delighted to have you here today. As usual, we have a great show planned for you. And so I do want to hurry into the show very, very quickly because you're going to love my guest. Now, for those of you out there that this is your first time to be on Second Wind, I want to explain that this show is for you. I created this for you during a time of my turmoil, my transition, and I wanted to give something back to brighten your day, to extend your day, to give you a group of support that you could have. And so that's why Second One was created. So I am so glad that if this is your first time here, that you have stopped by, and I hope you will stop by many more times in the future. So. Let's get to my guest today. Shannon Grissom is my guest today. Shannon didn't discover painting until she was 33 years old. But once she discovered this hidden passion, she was hooked and driven. By 1999, Shannon was able to leave her day job and began to create art at a full, as a full-time business. At 46, Shannon self-published her children's book, Monkey Made of Sockies, along with a line of licensed merchandise, including a coloring book and the popular Monkey Made of Sockies golf club head covers that have been carried on tour by several LPGA pros. Shannon is an award-winning artist, television producer, slash host, author, and songwriter. And she just launched an online creative school called Painterly. Learn more about her work with Socky with Sock Monkeys as Sock Monkey, Sock Monkey Oracle.com. I'm sorry about that. My tongue just, just wouldn't work. <laughs> Um, Thank you for having me. What a pleasure to have you here. This is like memory lane for me. I do recall these wonderful stuffed animals called sake, and I, but I didn't really understand the history of them. So it's really been delightful to um, kind of reunite because I've seen those things before, you know. Uh, tell us a little bit about this, what the sake monkey is. Well, sock monkeys were, um, people have been making stuffed toys out of socks and, and clothing for, for centuries. But when, it, when they really came into the fold uh, during the Great Depression. And what happened was the Nelson Knitting Company changed their knitting machine and and created this red heel on their sock. And that was it. That, that's when they really started taking off. And I think at the time during the depression, people were using worn socks and whatever they had on hand to make them. Now I'm pretty sure most people make them with new socks, but people used what they had and they cre created unique one of a time, uh, one of a kind um, huggable toys for people. So that's, you know, that's how they got started. Well, I know there's several people out there listening that have have, have met this sock uh, <laughs> monkey before, just as I have. And if for those that are new, this is it's totally handmade. It's mm -hmm. a, a folk art type of toy um, made out of these socks. But the mouth, the the red in the heel, made the mouth of the monkey. And so it's just a lovable toy. Now you found and was reunited with a sock monkey through your mother, correct? Yes, yes. Uh, you know, after, you know, I didn't have one growing up. And mm -hmm. um, 
but after my mom passed, we were cleaning out the house and in her old cedar trunk, I found this sock monkey and I, it just made me smile. It cracked me up. And my sisters agreed that it should go home with me. And I took it in the trunk home and it, it sat there for a couple of years, but that's, that's, that's kind of how I got introduced to it. Right. And then I started a series of paintings as a tribute to mom using that sock monkey. And that's how the whole thing got started. Yeah. Yeah. Well, why was it that you waited until 33 to begin painting? Well, you know, I, uh, grow, growing up, I was in a uh, very musical household. So we, we all would get together and jam. We all played different instruments. So everything was music, music, music. And, uh, oh, I painted a little bit in high school, but it wasn't anything official, just, you know, just a little bit here and there. Mm -hmm. And so then I, I went to college, I joined the workforce, I got a little rowdy, and I just didn't do anything officially creative. Yeah. And long about my early 30s, I was 33. I was just missing something. I was, I didn't feel like I was in the right job. I wasn't doing the right thing. I was sad. And I thought, well, what, what am I not doing? Well, I wasn't doing anything creative. I had no outlet. Right. So I took this toll painting class. And I remember all these women painting these beautiful, complete paintings. And I just painted this apple. And I remember thinking someday I can do a whole painting. <laughs> so I, but I just took this one class and I'm like, oh, this is it. I just knew this is what I'm supposed to be doing. Really? So I really, I would get up at, once I did that, I would get up at three in the morning every day and paint before work. Because oh. after work, I was completely fried. I always had stressful positions and I knew I wouldn't do anything creative after work. I just yeah. want to hit the couch. So I thought, okay, if I'm going to do this, I need to earmark the time. And I did that. And the funny thing is now I still wake up at three. It turned into a, you know, that's my, that's my time to create. So yeah, that's how I, I made this shift, made a huge difference in my life. Well, what was your career at that time? At the time I was a recruiter uh, for a staffing company. So mm -hmm. I, um, basically a headhunter. So I was, so you had people who needed people right away and people who were looking for jobs and it was this juggling act and, and a very fast paced customer service type position. And uh, uh, it was rewarding being able to match candidates with positions that that whole thing was great, but it was an intense process. Yeah, I bet it was. Cause I think the getting your, the, your direction that you want to go, how you want to spend your life is so, such a big question. Yes. And if you're not, your life really isn't very happy. Right. But you don't know why. You mm -hmm. don't really have an answer. You just know, I just know I'm not where I'm supposed to be. <laughs> it's kind of a lonely position. Actually. <laughs> Nobody there to talk to. <laughs> so how exciting it must have been. And what would you paint when you started with your apple? Would when you I first started painting, it was mostly still left. And you know, the interesting thing is at the time I started off with a single apple and thinking eventually I do these huge still lifes. And what I found was that my passion laid in portraits, portraits of things, portraits of people, and then portraits of sock monkeys. <laughs> so I did, and I did like to focus on an individual uh, type thing. So that, that was interesting. Didn't see that coming. Done, I, I'm assuming from going to your website, uh, there's a several paintings here. Are these your creations? Yeah. On your website? Faces? Yeah. Yeah. Faces? Yeah. 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 And I've been doing some, um, what I call channeled women where I did, lately I've been, so I'm working on the sock monkey still, but I also have this series of, I step up to the canvas and this is a lesson in trust. Mm -hmm. I step up to the canvas. I don't have a reference photo. I'm not looking at a model. And I say, okay, who wants to come out today? And I just paint. And so I've been getting these very interesting. <laughs> so yeah. the portraits on my site that don't look traditional, that's who they are. <laughs> and I just let them tell me who they want to be. It's fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I thought that's kind of interesting that you went to painting and didn't do music. 
since music had been part of your history. Yes. And your instrument is a guitar, I think. It, well, yes, it is now, but growing up, it was clarinet. And what happened is long about when I was eight, and I, I really love the clarinet, and, and I also play piano. When I I was 18, I had my wisdom teeth out and they hit a nerve when they took my, and in fact, I'm still numb, um, I'm part of my chin. So I was unable to hold an embouchure with my clarinet. So that was, that blew that out. I could not do that. Yeah. So, um, and I, you know, I admit I was on the pity pot for a little while. <laughs> with that. Okay. And um, so I shifted. And so the interesting thing was I, so I picked up when I was 50, this all had to do with the sock monkey. There was a, a festival and you needed to create a video for the sock monkey festival. And I didn't have time to get rights for music. So I thought, well, you know, I'll just write my own song. So I did. And that was when I was 50 and that got me back into music. So I started writing songs and I started playing the guitar. I'm still not, um, I wouldn't call myself this virtuoso guitarist. I, I play enough to get my music written, uh, but I enjoy it. It's just a great outlet. I feel like when I'm doing music, art, writing, when it's all coming out, then I'm running on all cylinders because there are different little modes of expression. Yeah. Well, do you have a common thread that runs throughout your writing and your painting? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you know, most of my, uh, I want, I want people to feel like they've been hugged. So, uh, so when I'm writing the sock monkey, the, the text part of the sock monkey work, it's very lighthearted. The, the, the paintings are very colorful. Mm -hmm. And I initially started uh, painting very, uh, realistic, very tight. And the older I get, the looser, more expressive I get. So the common thread that I have really would be more the joy because I can see my style evolves as the older I get things. I'm, I'm more open and um, more expressive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I know you, you accomplished that because it's just fun looking at your website. <laughs> Thank you. People have to go to your website to see what a sock monkey is. <laughs> and so your website is sockmonkeyoracle.com. Yep. I'm saying sock, S-O-C-K. Sock. <laughs> For some of those that have, this is be their first time to be the sock monkey. Yeah. Uh, they won't, they'll be surprised. But I mean, you have exploded with all of your ideas of creativity that you have around the sock monkey. <laughs> you created oracle cards. Now, yes. oracle cards, explain how those are used for those people in the audience that don't Well, know. you know how I like to use them. There are a number of, so what they are, there are a deck of cards and they typically have a guidebook that explains each card. And how I like to use them is I pull one every day and say, okay, what's my theme for the day? What, what do I need to keep in mind as I go through my day? And, yeah. and the funny thing about this morning, I pulled the sock monkey knees wrapped up tight like a pretzel and it was unwind. So I needed it. So that was my little message to chill out a little bit, nice. <laughs> not take things so seriously. And so um, play. And uh, so I'd like to, and, and I love how the little the little deck, you, I pull a card and it just tells me what I need to focus on, just what I need to hear. Every, so that's my favorite way to use them. You can do long involved spreads, but uh, any way you want to play with them is good. Yeah. Um, I have experienced them, not your sock, not the sock monkey oracle cards yet, but uh, they are fascinating to work with and they can just really turn the tide for you that day or lift your spirits or give you hope or bring you some uh, courage to yes. fight whatever you have to, you know? So they're wonderful things. Now, what are some of the affirmations and readings that they can find on these? Well, ones? you know, if, um, the one thing about the affirmations is that I, I instead of a traditional, uh, affirmation where you say I am 
whatever. Like I am a happy person. I infuse each affirmation with I love because when I, I found that when I started saying I love that I am whatever it is, then I really feel it. So uh, like there's one for tea time, the, the card tea time. And it says, I, I love that I have balance between work and play. Mm. And, um, you know, I love that I'm a positive, but each, each card will have the message and then the affirmation will go with each particular card. Yeah. Your website, your cards, the um, sock monkey, it all is playful to me. So how important and how does that work word relate to you? Well, you know, I, I, um, I've obviously been very driven and work oriented. And what I've found over the years is that play is so important. Mm -hmm. First of all, for balance, it's important, but also when I inject play into what I'm doing, everything seems to flow better. Everything, it, it, when it's happier, then, then it's a magnet for even more happy. <laughs> yeah. So, and so, that the sock monkey and the sock monkeys are playful. You just look at them and smile. And so, so yeah, it's, it's a common, it's a common theme. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I think it's pretty common that as we age, get older, life gets more serious, problems get bigger. Um, we all get a little soured or down in our mouth if you will. And it, we honestly forget how to play. <laughs> we forget how to smile, how to be grateful and how to expand ourselves. And so I think it's wonderful that you've created something that can be so supportive to so many people. Now, I know you've got stories from people that they've shared with you. Could yeah. you share a couple of those with us? You know, I, um, one of the really cool things is that uh, this woman uh, wrote me an email and she said that she had decided that she was going to just stop drinking on the week weekdays, right? And and not and um, so she's she's obviously concerned about her drinking and um, so she started. She's been pulling this sock monkey oracle every day. And she pulled one and it was talking and, and she had thought about maybe just cheating that day and having one. And <laughs> she was like, I don't want to bring someone like So she pulled a she pulled a card and it was all about addictions. And she didn't drink that day. She waited till the weekend. So I mean, this is for me, I I I, I use them for, you know, what a lot of times the question I ask is, what do I need to know today? Yeah. Um, but I've heard so many stories about people with their sock monkeys, um, not just the cards, but with sock monkeys that they've made. And another, uh, I had another woman, she sent me to two monkeys that her mom had left when she passed unfinished monkeys and she got to finish making them. So she got to work through her grief by completing these projects. So that was very cool. They're yeah. very healing. Yeah. Um, now on your website, do you tell about how to make them? Something? I do. I have a, I have a page that I found, um, a video. I didn't make this video, but I linked to two different monkey makers and that shows you, it gives you, you can download the instructions, you can download and you can watch these videos. And between the two videos, you will be able to make a sock monkey on your own. Ah, yeah. yeah. Um, do they all look alike then? No, no, they're all different. And, and uh, now there's interesting because the, the older socks from, uh, I'm not sure when the, the new company bought the Nelson Knitting Company, but anyway, the older socks have wider grins. So those are going to be uh, happier looking monkeys. Mm -hmm. And the newer socks are, are interesting characters. And so it's just a matter of what type of socks you use and how you make the smiles and what you add to them. They're all individual. And what I found was I hadn't made one until recently. I tried a few years back and, and decided I was going to stick to painting. But then I thought that's a limiting belief. See what you can do to, to shift that. Because I believe that if I 
if I, if I shift things on a physical level, I can change my thought process. So I, so I got my sister together and we, we made monkeys and we both had the same pattern, the same socks, and they're completely different. And it's just, it's just wonderful to see what comes out. Yeah. Does it start, is it all like one uh, tube and then the head is tied together and the rest of the body is a, that same tube? It's, uh, it's two socks and the body, head and legs are one sock. Uh -huh. And then you use another sock for the ears and the arms and the tail. Oh, okay. And the hat. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, what has been one of the best things about this life that you have given back to the, to the sock? Um, What do you feel has been the biggest gift to you? And then I'll, to somebody else, then okay. the second uh, would be to somebody else. I would say the, the biggest gift to me is that it helps me as positive as I can be and as much as I have shifted and changed my life, there are still areas where I need help. And so the, the, you know, it's a process and the, the soft monkeys and the Oracle cards, that whole process is just like a little, little coach every morning. Right. right. <laughs> so it gives, it gives back to me. It helps me tune in to the wisdom that I already have that I forget to access. Mm -hmm. So that's been the gift that it gives to me. Um, mm -hmm. and as far as other people, there's so many ways that it gives back to them from the monkey makers who just find great joy in creating these beings and sharing them with other people. I know uh, Stanford Hospital, uh, there are a group of women who make these monkeys and give them to the children there and that oh, brings okay. joy to them. So, so they're doing this wonderful thing and then passing that along to, to patients. And so it's, it just seems to be a way of continually spreading joy. I mean, it doesn't get any better than that. No, it doesn't for sure. Um, the, the animal monkey sock was made because during the depression, it was very, a very difficult time. People mm -hmm. didn't, they had to use what they had in their homes. And so these initially started out with getting rid of the old socks, mm -hmm. but allowing something to be created for a child basically i think most of these would go to a child but um what a creative way to think about and bring back some of that feeling that they must have had during the depression the desperate need to provide but provide with what they had yes and so it's kind of gives us a sense of the time and the frustration of the country Mm -hmm. to be able to see a a toy that was created back in a time when it was really difficult yes mm. so it is a wonderful toy and you have <laughs> given it new life I <laughs> now tell us about the book that you've written oh i i have a, a little coloring book and then i have a uh children's book and that was that was the first thing when I first did all the paintings, um, I, well, when I first did maybe 30 of them, <laughs> I wrote a children's book called Monkey Made of Sockies. And it was just about uh, the sock monkey and how it was the child's favorite toy. And it was just because the monkey always made the child smile. So that was my first, my first foray into that. And then things just kind of expanded after that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Have they made different, have you noticed if the, there have been other creative people that did some interesting twitches to the monkey, yes. more the costumes or whatever? Oh gosh, you know, there are, I just have seen so many creative, inventive ways that people have, I mean, and they'll use, 
not only different costumes, but oh, Argyle socks, not even the traditional socks. So they're very colorful and fun. And yeah. it's uh, if you if you ever get a chance, just go on eBay and Google or just Google sock monkey and, and click images and you're going to see all kinds of fun images and fun creations. I bet, you know, that's so true. I hadn't thought about that, but you know, if you've lost something or want to find something, just always go to Google. Just Google it. <laughs> what did we do before Google? I know it. <laughs> I'm always referring it to how do I do this on this computer? Yes. You know, how do I get this smaller? The print blew up. You know, simple things like that. Not my daughter. They are, they know it all, but <laughs> <laughs> not me. So. Um, what um, has been one of the best things about the journey? What's the new journey that this took you on? Well, in, uh, for, you know, the, the beginning of the journey was processing the grief of losing my mom. Yeah. And um, at this stage, I'm releasing all of my limiting beliefs that have ever held me back. So that's what this, this is doing. When, how this Sock Monkey Oracle got born, the, the actual, I, I always had the Oracle card deck in mind. Yeah. But what happened was during the pandemic, I had two one woman shows shut down with, with the lockdown and nobody saw my work. Yes. And so I thought, gosh, you know, I gotta, I've got to do something different. This isn't working. So I, um, that's when I wrote the text and got the, the guidebook done yeah and during that process it helped me examine what what was I thinking that wasn't true about myself what could I change how could I shift how could I grow and so this whole process has just been incredibly life-bringing to me and and yeah I mean it's just blown apart a lot of limiting beliefs and now we all have limiting beliefs, yes. <laughs> you know, we all get those from whatever, you know, some, it's some strange things we conceive in our youth, yes. in our young hood, um, about a situation that happened in our youth. Mm -hmm. And so, um, did it just, how did that confront your, your limitations? Well, you know, the interesting thing was that with each card reading, when I went to write the book, um, I, I was like, my gosh, who am I to write the text for this book? And I heard in my mind's ear, who are you not to just basically take notes? We'll give it to you. So I did. And so that was the, first, so that was the first limiting belief. I'm not good enough to write this. And uh, this, you know, and then, and then as I, each card is a state of being or some sort of transition, some sort of message. And so each card is a situation that I've encountered over my life. And, um, and, it, and it's cyclical. It comes back again and you get to encounter it again and maybe on a different level. So it just, it's, gosh, it's a gift that keeps on giving. <laughs> yes. So how many times now you created these cards when? Uh, what happened, the lockdown was, so this was in COVID oh. and I, I did the, they took me 20 years. Uh, I've done almost 50 sock monkey paintings. And so I painted those over 20 years, but it wasn't until 2020 when I decided, gosh, you know, I got to do something different. So that's when I did the graphic design. You know, I took the, the paintings, did the graphic design for the cards and then wrote the text. So I did that in 2020, uh, pitched it to be on words and then it, it took a year from, you know, editing and tweaking, and then we got it to market, so. Do you have a card there? Oh, I was going to say show it, but they can't see it. They'll just... <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I forgot where I was. Um, I wish you all could see it. I, um, it would help make some, so much more sense. Yeah. Um, if you could see one of those cards. I was going to have her pull a card for today. <laughs> well, you know what? I'll pull a card and we'll get the message anyway. Okay. Let's do that. So let me them up and say, okay, what does Joyce's audience need to hear today? Huh? 
it says, it's, I'm, I'm trying to show you the card, right? It says make music and the message for make music. Let me read this to you. It says, sing like the frogs, drum like a woodpecker, trumpet like the elephants, pick up a kazoo or grab your accordion and play. Making music has so many benefits. First and foremost, it's fun. It helps you be more alert, lowers your blood pressure and calms anxiety. Music gets the good jujus going and keeps them going. Feeling sad? Music gets the bad jujus out of your sock monkey body. <laughs> this card may also signify that it's time for you to make some noise about something you've been holding inside of you. Now is the right time to speak your truth. Take some time to connect with the music today. It's such a great healer. And the affirmation for that is I love that my voice matters. Ah, yes. Yeah. Well, I do love music. <laughs> oh, ah, that's great. <laughs> yes, I do. So that that fits me. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> so, uh, in your description of what you do, it says you're an award-winning artist, a television producer slash host. So do you do a show as well? I did. I did a show called Give Your Wall Some Soul. And it ran for seven years and I've done other little things, but as far as long running series, that was it. Mm -hmm. And it started off in one little public access station and grew to stations all over the country. And it was, um, to kind of give you an idea, it was like uh, Bob Ross, the painter meets Emerald. Because <laughs> I've, got, I've got that, I'm not mellow like Bob Ross, but I would show you how to paint, but I have more emerald energy <laughs> so uh, yes. it was fun and we we taped it uh it was filmed live to tape so whatever happened happened so it, it, it was fun very lively uh -huh. show. Uh -huh. you can still see it on they have uh there it's still airing in some stations and there are episodes you can watch on youtube youtube yeah, yeah. well why did you decide to stop it well my husband was in a uh I was actually, see, this is another where you get course corrections and you get to shift gears. I was actually on the set filming a pilot to take it to the networks mm -hmm. when my husband was in a major accident. And so that was one of those, what I call course corrections from God to do something yeah. different. So I needed to be home and, and uh, my focus was there. Mm -hmm. And so I, it was funny because they, the producers gave me a month to come back and film the show. Well, I came back in a month and I said all the right things, but my energy was not there. I was exhausted. I just, you know, it, it was not pretty. <laughs> so I knew that, you know what, this was not the time for me to do that. I, you know, I gave it everything I had. So, and every time there's something like that, that stops and sets you in another direction, then, then it was then that the music started coming back. So mm -hmm. it's interesting that, you know, one door closes, another one opens. And mm -hmm. I'd still love to do more TV. That was just a blast. So much fun. What? More TV? Would, more TV television would be fun. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And what is this uh, Painter League? I started a school and uh, it, it, right now it's just got a, a little two or three classes on it. And so I want to grow this into a creativity school. Right now it's got a couple of classes on how to paint, one on grat my gratitude practice, because that's a, a daily practice I have every day. Yeah. And so they're just lessons in creativity and, and holistic living all mixed together. So that's, that's what those are. I have slowed down on creating courses since I launched the Sock Monkey Oracle, but I'll be picking that back up. Yeah. And they get that from your website. Yes. And it, it gives you a free. It can give you a link. There's a free introductory class and then okay. all the other classes are they're not very expensive. So. And is that for adults or for all for adults? Adults. Yeah. Although the um I would say from junior high on you could take any of the classes from the gratitude the gratitude classes would be great for children as well and the painting classes they could yeah they could definitely do those yeah um 
Yeah, the gratitude. I think it's wonderful that you're doing the gratitude because that is the most powerful type of um, daily um, offering that you can do is just yeah. being grateful for what you have yeah. and uh, expressing that is just a wonderful daily. Thank practice. you. I mean, that started, you know, about the time my husband had the accident. Uh, my niece challenged everybody on Facebook to write something they were grateful for. And I thought, oh, I need to shift my focus because I wasn't real grateful at the time <laughs> after what was going on. And um, so anyway, she said, everybody do it for the month of November. So I thought, okay, so I'd post something I was grateful for every day in November. Well, that was in 2009. I have done it every day since then. And so every day I start my, I do a post and I, I add a picture and I, I go for a walk and, and I search for gratitude on my walk. What, what you know, so, sometimes, um, I'll see a reflection in a, in a puddle of water and that'll help me be, you know, I'll be grateful for a reflection, time to reflect. Or, you know, I just find it's usually states of being rather than stuff because stuff comes and goes. So I'm, I'm grateful for joy. I'm grateful for, you know, that kind of thing. And so that's the other cool thing is that it, it's become ingrained in me to search for the good. So that, you know, my head goes in the wrong direction. I'm like, nope. Don't go there. <laughs> Find something positive. <laughs> when I was starting it, I studied with Jack Canfield, and you know oh. he has he's big with gratitude, and has a, printed a book on gratitude book. And when I was doing that practice, I'm not doing that practice now, but uh, when I was doing it, I would, it was like I'd run out of, I'd repeat. And I, I, <laughs> You gotta have more things you're grateful for than repeating. <laughs> so it does give you food for thought that you just yes. don't look for all the good that's in yeah. your life. You overlook the simplest things, and it's the simple things that give you such quality. Yes, with like many times. And I think repeating is okay. Repeating is good because you're you're still grateful for whatever it is. Yes, but I don't think the road, no. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> Is that a limiting belief? I'm just <laughs> showing myself with right there. <laughs> oh, so do you have more planned for the sock monkey? You know what? I'm. I have a deep feeling that it's going to go even more places i don't have any plan they're not on my well i think one one of the things i'd like to do is uh is create an app on your phone version of the cards because yes. a lot of people use it on their phone so i would like to do that uh i think a workbook coloring book would be wonderful to go with this so that people could really explore some of these you know, each one of these cards in depth so I, I think I've got that other than that uh I know there's more coming I can feel it but I don't have it it hasn't gestated yet but yeah. don't you already have a coloring book I do but that's on that's on the different sock monkey paintings I think the workbook that I'm thinking of would have each card and then it would have exploratory questions so that you could reflect on on the different themes of the cards and really work through some things. So I think this would be more in depth. Yeah. This would be I, more spiritual. Yeah. I'm curious though, how you got connected with the Saki's Golf Club. <laughs> okay, so I did my book release party for the first little children's book at, at the country club. And the CEO at the time said, you know, those would be great golf club head covers. And I had never thought of that. And so Eric gave me the name of a uh, head cover manufacturer, Daphne's that he really liked. And I, so I went and had a prototype made yes. and then, um, and then I had never done anything like that. So I'm practicing my pitch and I'm writing a script and I'm, you know, I'm really practicing before I pick up the phone and she's like, oh yeah, just send me the prototype. Well, um, so that, I mean, here, uh, it took me about, it took about a year between the initial negotiations and when they actually came to market. 
but those were just a huge hit. It was, you know, and so I'm not afraid if someone comes up with a good idea, I'll explore it and see where it goes. And so they were, you know, and I think the coolest thing was I got to be a marshal at the U.S. Open in, uh, in ah. yes. And so I'm on the green and I see one of the LPGA pros coming up the fairway with my head cover. Oh, and no. So, oh, Perfect. my goodness. So the so tears are coming out my eyes because I mean, to see this, to see this come from nothing to that. And this little girl behind the ropes, she said, lady, what's wrong? And I'm there to keep the crowd quiet. I mean, and she said, lady, what's wrong? And I said, that's my monkey. And she starts screaming, that's her monkey. I'm like, oh my God. So I got her quiet before the pro got to, to the green, thank God. But they didn't ask me back. <laughs> they didn't? They're lost. They're lost. So are they still selling? They just ran their course. The contract just ended. And, and so they had a good uh, 10, 12 year run. Oh, you know, really? Yeah, yeah, they had a long run and they they did, they, for a while they were among the, the manufacturer's top selling head covers. In mm -hmm. fact, I had this dream about me getting off the plane in Japan. And it was kind of like the Beatles where you get off the plane in an open runway and, and people are screaming instead of my name. They're screaming, monkey, monkey, monkey. So I told the manufacturer, Daphne, Jane at Daphne's about this. She said, well, she later, she sent me a note and she said they were standing in line in Japan to get the monkeys. Oh, I bet so. Yeah. yeah. Cause they, they're crazy about golf. Yes. So, and they like everything Americans do. <laughs> so. It was so, so they're selling in, in. They were selling worldwide. Yes, they were. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I hope it continues with great. Thank success. you. <laughs> I think that'll be great. Now, what's next for you? Because I, I, I'm sitting with a woman that has lots of ideas mm -hmm. and is not limited by any disbeliefs anymore. <laughs> so, um, what do you, can you even share some of those visions that you have well you know i see uh i see i'm doing that series of channels i see another oracle deck and in yeah. fact i'm out of I, I plan on doing 44 paintings and i'm on number 26 so i'll it'll take me a while to finish the paintings and then do the writing and all that so that'll probably that's probably another year in the making of doing that it's right. it's funny because people see that that the Sock Monkey Oracle was published. And this is like one of those 20 year overnight success stories. <laughs> but my next project I'm, I'm visioning will take about a year. So that's, that's my focus and that's my plan. That being said, I have learned over the years, if something really cool comes up, I'm going to run with it and set some things aside and get it done. So I love that. Now, what would the focus be in the second set this is more like everyday guides every day tuning into your inner wisdom through and, and so these these women they're they're most of them are women but you, some of them are just androgynous whoever whoever comes out right and what my my thrust for this whole deck is that every i found that there is wisdom in, from everybody i encounter if i just listen mm -hmm. if i just pay attention and I may not always like what I hear, but there's wisdom there. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and so this is going to be about finding, you know, each, each person's going to have a, a personality, kind of like the monkeys, but it'll be more everyday wisdom, everyday help. Yeah. Um, do you, do you have a, a person in mind or an age group or um, a focus when you start creating oracle decks for this for the sock monkeys i i did not focus on an age group and this is really the sock monkeys actually can go from from children through adults so i think this has a, got a broader range the guides that i'm working on now would probably be an older audience Yes. And, um, you know, I love what you're doing with second wind because I feel like my whole life has been a series of second wins. Yes. <laughs> yes. And that's 
similar to what I'm doing with with these. You know, there's so many do overs if we, you know, if I just give myself half a chance. And I think that's part of the focus of this new Oracle card deck is that look for the do over. Look where look where you can go. If things didn't work out, there's plan B, C, D, Z, whatever it takes. Mm -hmm. um, I'm reading a book now where they say, what's next? Mm. So this happened, this came to an end. So what's next? What's next? I it's like, like that. It keeps moving you forward because it is a real tendency. The older we get, the more we lose. We lose loved ones. We lose careers. We lose. And it's, it's not what we think in our lives is that they're going to last forever. But there has to be a transition. And, yes. and everyone has to go through it. No yeah. one's touched more than another. Yeah. And so it's really, really um, important to me to help that woman or person, I'm primarily, I work with women, that there is always a next. We yes. just have to find it. Yes. And so, and it's just as exciting as the past and it offers just as many rewards, but it's different. Yeah. but it's there <laughs> so it's finding it that's the key it's great that you help them find it yeah yeah so anyway but I think the oracle cards you produce would I just can't help but think they're just full of love as you have said and thank just joy thank I, you they're very playful and I think it teaches us to play maybe a little bit <laughs> yeah <laughs> so uh, we are coming to the end of our time together. I always hate to say goodbyes to my guests. <laughs> I to have a cup of tea and talk some more. But uh, you're on all the social media and Facebooks. Mm -hmm. And you have a YouTube where we can go and see. What was that? What did you have on YouTube? Oh, give your walls some soul. Yes. Yeah. But yeah. if you just look up my name, Shannon Grissom, you'll see everything from sock monkeys to music to to the tv show yeah okay cool and then of course the website is sock monkey oracle.com yes so listeners that's where you need to go to find all of the things that shannon does she does so many things <laughs> she transition through so many things <laughs> and keeps on creating so i think yeah. that's wonderful thank you now I do like to close the show with one more question. If you're open to it. Okay. okay see, this is the woman who has no, she's open. <laughs> <laughs> so what would you say is the most successful thing that you have created about your life so far? I would say the most successful thing is not not so much a thing that I've created. The most successful thing is that I discovered that the only difference between me being happy and being unhappy is my decision to go in that direction. So if I'm not happy, and, and once I discovered that, it was easier for me to make shifts because life hits you and, and you I need to make shifts. So, right. so I would have to say that's my most successful. I, you know, I like when the, my husband was in the accident. Okay. I decided that wasn't working. I need to go somewhere else and the shutdown happened and okay, that's not working. I need to, you know, it's the what yeah. next thing. So the, yeah. the fact that I own that it is my decision and my responsibility to be joyful and to live a fulfilling life. That's my most successful thing because I think that's when everything shifted. Uh, up until my thirties, I, I, I don't know, I guess I thought I was at the mercy of whatever was going on and, and didn't realize that, that I could change things. So that's my biggest success yeah. is realizing that and taking action. Yeah, well, I agree. It's that decision that makes it, yeah. that makes our lives better. So, um, so anyway, I want to say it's been a pleasure having you on Second Wind today. Thank you. We've given them lots of options. They can, <laughs> my listening audience <laughs> can go to your website and they can get to see what a sock monkey looks like. 
and it may, they tell me that in when I was Googling and looking up some things, they said that if you had an old sock monkey, that it would be valued at 50 billion. Whoa. Do you wow. believe that? Wow. Yeah, that's what it said, but it had so many zeros in it, I could hardly. Wow. So if you really have an antique sock monkey, you might have a treasure there. <laughs> so anyway, but thank you again. Thank you. Uh, we'll look forward to getting more familiar and seeing the next thing that you create for us. So thanks. Thanks so much for having me. Now, you know, dear listeners, I always like for you to share this message. There's tons of people out there that don't even, they don't even know a sock monkey exists. They don't know what it is. So even by sharing that, you can bring joy and happiness to somebody that might need your help, your support through whatever transition they're going through. And it's just fun to laugh with friends, right? Or laugh by yourself. So you give somebody a friend, you tell them where to go, and they can go meet the sock monkey. And while you're there, you can also think about the oracle cards to give you an added boost to help you plan every day with gratitude and happiness. So as usual, I ask that you have a great week. And you remember what, what Shannon shared with us. It's all about the decisions. You make the decisions as to how you want your life to be. So let's think about that this week. And until next week, go out, have a great week. Think about you, think about the sock monkey, and be sure to come back next week. So thank you for being here today. It's been so much fun. Bye now. Joyce Buford returns next week at the same time for another edition of Second Wind. Through the Joyce Buford Empowerment System, women are receiving the support they need through their transitions and are able to reclaim their true purpose with confidence. They receive the tools they need to map out new lives. You can find out more about her coaching services at JoyceBufordEmpowers.com.